So you've hooked up a treadmill motor to your mill, lathe, bandsaw, drill press, or any number of other shop tools. And now you want to have some sort of digital readout that shows you how fast it's spinning. Let's go over some of the ins and outs of hooking up a unit like this. Greetings fellow DIYer and welcome to my video. So if you look online, there is many different digital readouts, but when you look at the inexpensive digital RPM meter, the basic ones look like this. They are DC powered and they come in red, blue, and green. Now I'm not saying that this is the only option out there. There is this exact same unit, exact same components, that is AC powered. And I actually put one of those on my lathe. I replaced a DC powered unit with an AC powered unit. Everything else was all the same. Everything else was basically equal. And interestingly enough, I found that the AC powered unit had more lag than the DC powered unit. And I don't know why that is. In other words, if I turned my knob on my variable power supply, increase the speed or decrease the speed, it took longer for the AC RPM meter to catch up than it did for the DC RPM meter to catch up. Also, when I purchased the AC RPM meter, it was more expensive than the DC RPM meter. Now, not significantly so. I think it was about 20 bucks for the AC unit, and this can be had for right around 10, give or take. Incidentally, I will be putting an Amazon link for something similar to this down in the description. So cost-wise, a little cheaper, although if you're using a DC-powered unit, you have to convert to DC. And that may be challenging to do. The good news is this works under a wide range of voltage. If you look right here, it says DC 8 to 24 volts. So there's lots of ways to power this that you may probably already have in your shop or in your house. The first would be a simple AC to DC house transformer. Your basic transformer that a dozen different things that you have at home are probably powered by. Now, a couple of things you've got to make sure that you do correctly. Some of these are AC to AC, depending on how what they're powering is set up. Also, if they are in fact AC to DC, they are polarized, meaning you have a positive and a negative, just like everything else that's DC. So if you're gonna use this to power this, you gotta make sure that you use a meter and you know which wire is which so that everything gets hooked up correctly. Also, you have the challenge of converting from this sort of plug into an enclosure or however you may be wiring it. Now, if the cord is long enough, you may just plug this into an outlet and be good to go. But if you're wanting your power supply to be enclosed in a box, you may have to wire a female receptacle, like one would normally go on the end of an extension cord, to plug into this and go to an AC source in the box. You could also potentially solder wires onto this or use spade terminals. Being that it's AC and it's high voltage, I would make sure that everything is thoroughly heat shrink taped or covered up if you go with that option. But this can be kind of cumbersome and also they can get kind of warm. If you put this in a box in an enclosure, it's going to get warm if air is not blowing on it because it's designed to plug into the wall and have air circulating around it. So this, in my opinion, is not the best option, although it is an okay option, especially if you're plugging it directly into the wall and not putting it in your enclosure. The next option would be to use something that you may already have. Now, this looks big and fancy, and it's really not. Both of these came out of treadmills. Both of these are designed to do several functions in a treadmill. But the most important function is both of these are AC to DC power converters. They not only convert the 120 volts coming in from the wall, they step it down using a transformer to a manageable voltage. But on top of that, other components on here convert it to DC. 
These are basically the same. This one has a few more features, so we're gonna look at this one. But all you have to do is read the labeling. If I pull this up, you can see that right there we have nine volts positive, and here we have ground. And I used this exact component to power an RPM meter just like this on my lathe when I first set it up. And it worked great. I had really good success doing it. If we look over here, we've got a five volt output and here is another five volt output. So you have three different power outputs, two of which are five volt and one of which is nine volt. That gives you options. I don't know what you're hooking up. Maybe you've hooked up an ELS to your system and it requires a five volt input to power it. You could now power it off of this unit right here. So that is a pretty good way to go. If this is something that came in the treadmill, you may have this, or you may not have known what you could do with it and you pitched it. So if you've still got it, you have options, you can use it. I actually have a whole video showing some of the features and options and why a person might use this for something other than a treadmill. The third option for powering this with DC and my preferred option, what I have now on anything that I have that is running a digital RPM meter like this is a dedicated 120 volt AC to 12 volt DC power supply. Now this is very similar to the components that are inside the wall mounted transformer that I already showed you. But what's nice is it's not encased. So it's gonna breathe fairly well. It's got holes to mount it into your enclosure. And that allows you to put it in place and use it. Now, the nice thing is that the amperage draw on this is so low that you're hardly going to be drawing any power through this. So that means it's probably not going to put out a ton of heat. Very simple to hook up. You have voltage input right here. You have your voltage output there labeled positive and negative. Now, of course, this is the AC side, so it's alternating current, so they can be wired up either way. And here we have our positive and our negative. Now that we've figured out how we're gonna power this, and again, this is the way I recommend, I'm gonna put an Amazon link for a component like this down in the description if you are interested. But these are also available on eBay and from a bunch of different suppliers. So feel free to shop around. I just put those links there for your convenience. Well, that's not completely true. If you like my channel and you like the work I'm doing, please try and click those links because I do get a little bit of a kickback but I'm not in it to pay my mortgage. So if you find a better deal somewhere else, feel free to purchase it somewhere else. Now that we've figured out how to power this, how do we wire it up? Well, if we look on the back, it actually tells us how everything is wired. We have positive right there. We have negative going into this guy right here. And then we have some labeling. We have brown, blue, and black. So if we look at this right here, this is what plugs into this unit and it's got little teeth on it so it only plugs in one way. And then that wire comes out. So it says positive, so the furthest one here is positive. This next one is negative. Then we have our blue wire that goes into the third one. The fourth one is skipped, I'm not sure what its function is. And the fifth one goes to the black wire. Now you may be a little confused because usually ground is the black wire. Well, those other three wires are on our sensor. I uncoil this so that it's unruly and doesn't look so good on camera. We have three wires here. We have brown, blue, and black. So the brown one is gonna hook to the positive side because this requires power. The blue one hooks to the blue signal and then the black one comes in right here. And that's what allows us to get power to this. So that's really all that's involved. Hooking this up is super simple. There are plenty of wiring diagrams online showing you how this is wired up. The next piece is this right here. And this is our hall sensor. It has these nice nuts on it so you can adjust the depth so that if you're mounting it in something that requires it to be further in, you can have it be further in. And then it comes with this magnet. Now, the most important thing with this magnet is that it is polarized. In other words, it has a north and a south like all magnets do. The problem is this switch is also polarized. So if I mount this magnet 
to whatever is spinning, and this passes by it, one way it will work, but if it's flipped around the other way, it will not. So you need to make sure you test that when you hook it up. So now you're thinking, how do I mount the magnet? Well, if what you're going to is steel or cast iron, you're probably going, that's a piece of cake. I'll just stick the magnet to it and we're good to go. Problem is, centrifugal force will throw this magnet when you get to a certain RPM. Ask me how I know. My preferred way always for mounting this magnet, double-sided adhesive foam tape. You can cut it to shape, you can stick it to steel, you can stick it to plastic, you can stick it to wood. It'll allow you to affix it to whatever you need to stick it to and give you the ability to remove it if you need to make an adjustment later. So let's take a look at my actual power supply with the RPM meter installed. This is the unit for my bandsaw, as I said before. When I turn it on, RPM meter comes on and gives you a nice display of how fast the wheel inside is turning. It's not actual feet per minute, but it does give me a pretty good idea. As I said, I've got coarse and fine speed control. That's the coarse, and here's the fine speed control. All right, we'll go ahead and power that down. I'm gonna unplug it and we're gonna open the box and I'm gonna show you how I have this wired up and configured with the hall sensor. Other things to note, we got power coming in. This is the 110 that's going through the switch right here. And then we have power going out that is to the treadmill motor. And then I've got a wire coming in here on the side that is going to my hall sensor. I've unplugged it. I'm always one that anytime you're doing anything with electricity, especially AC, you want to verify that it is in fact unplugged. And yes, I can look and I know that it's unplugged because I just unplugged it, but we're going to double check. We flip it on, nothing happens. I know that there's no power to this box. If it opened up, if you look back in there, there is my 110 volt AC to 12 volt DC power board circuit. I've got it mounted directly to the metal case, but I have standoffs, nylon standoffs, so that we're not creating a direct short between the underside soldered connections and the metal box. I've got wires coming out in red and black going to the wire that goes to the back of my RPM meter and it is providing power. And then I've also got the wires coming in, the three wires from the hall sensor. And that's basically all that's required to get all this set up. Now we're gonna look at the hall sensor here in the actual bandsaw and I made a little bit of a mistake and I'll show that to you so that hopefully you don't make the same mistake that I did. All right, so here's my main wheel and here's my hall sensor going, sticking through the back here. And if you look, you can see that there's actually a second hole right there. So a couple of things that you have to keep in mind when you're installing a hall sensor like this. First is the distance to the magnet. You've got to get it fairly close. And that's what's nice about the hall sensor being threaded. You're able to make that adjustment. But you've also got to watch for anything that could potentially come in contact. So I originally took measurements. I knew where this lip was and I went ahead and installed the hall sensor, got it where I wanted and I kept getting a clicking sound. And the reason was there is a counterweight, a balancing weight, I should say, that was added to the inside of this wheel. And it was just enough interference that it was actually contacting this hall sensor. So I had to re-drill, move it out, and reaffix my magnet. Now, as I said earlier in the video, I just used double-sided adhesive tape and my magnet stuck it directly to the backside. And that is what is giving me my RPM of this wheel. Based on the circumference of a circle, 2.3 times whatever my RPM is, is going to be my feet per minute. It's not elegant. It does require a little basic math, but it's pretty close and I can do the math close enough to know that I am right where I need to be. Now, had I done preset speeds, used this little piece of reflective tape and my digital RPM meter, I could have set it up so that one is for steel and two is for aluminum and so on and so forth. And I have an elegant system showing how to do that. I did a video on that using a rotary switch. 
If you've not seen that video, you should go check it out. So that's it. These are really fairly simple to set up. The wiring is simple. The powering is probably the hardest part. And again, if you're going to get one, I do recommend the DC version over the AC version, unless you do not care about how long it takes for the unit to catch up. If that's not a concern, get the AC one because it's simpler. Although even with purchasing a power supply, I think it works out to be just a little more expensive. I think you can get this and the power supply that I have linked for right around $15 at the time that this video was shot, whereas an AC RPM meter is gonna cost you closer to 20. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them down in the comments and I would love to get back to you. If you like what you've seen, please click like. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.